Hey everybody, I'm Zachary Deptawa, Cloud Developer Advocate for Microsoft, and this is Misha, Developer Advocate for HashiCorp. Today we're going to be talking about HashiCorp Vault. So, Misha, what is HashiCorp Vault? So Vault is our secrets management tool. So it basically lets you store, manage, and control access to things like tokens, passwords, certificates, and other types of secrets. Okay, awesome. So this is this is for storing uh, that that type of exactly like sensitive data. That's okay, right. very cool. And so um, what what kinds of things can you do? Like what you you I guess you authenticate this uh, against this in a certain way. Yeah, so it's like like any like any other web application. So you need like a username and password. Like you need you need a username and password to log in, and you get a token back from Vault. So the way that works is using uh, uh, authentication methods or yeah. auth methods. Um, so Vault has various auth methods like LDAP, uh, Active Directory, and things like that. Uh, but more importantly, for on the Azure side, we have the Azure Auth method that you can use to. Okay. okay. So can you go into that a little bit? What is yeah. uh, the Azure Auth method in, in regards to Vault? Yeah. So the Azure Auth method is basically uh, letting uh, letting Vault assume that uh, that that Azure is a trusted third party. Uh, so what what users on the Azure side can do, they can present a JWT token or a JWT token uh, to uh, to Vault, which is signed by uh, Azure Active Directory. Uh, and then Vault's able to log you in and give your token back. And once you have this token, you can do things like you know generate secrets, store secrets. So you can pretty much use all the Vault's capability once you're logged in. Okay, cool. So yeah. thinking about this from um, you know my my perspective, if yeah. say you're using environment variables to uh, to access parts of an application or store username and password, that kind of thing. Um, are you doing this from the command line? Or is it kind of the same thing? Mm. Is that where you'd store these kinds of things? Right. So, so we do have a CLI tool. Like Vault ships as a single binary. Uh, it has a CLI component, so it uses the the same APIs that Vault provides on the server side. Uh, so, yeah, you can either use an HTTP client directly and and communicate with Vault, or you can use the CLI as well. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, so I think we're going to take a look at Vault today. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. So here I have a demo uh, already prepared for, for for everyone who's watching. So in this, like, it's a simple demo. So we have a Vault um, server already running in Azure in a VM. Uh, it's running in dev mode because we just want to play around and mostly focus on how to authenticate uh, uh, using the Azure Auth method. Okay. Uh, so we'll take a look at that. So I have a really handy README here, which we'll kind of use and we'll open source this later after the video. Uh, so first thing we want to do in, in, in Vault is to enable the Azure Auth method. So we have a new, see, a new UI that I'm really proud of, which we really recently open sourced. Uh, so we'll be using the UI for that part. Uh, so we can go to Settings and then uh, the Auth methods, and then basically choose Azure. Here, uh, there's like things like tenant ID, which the, on the Azure side, users are already familiar with. Uh, then we have the resource URL, which in this case will be management.azure.com. And then the other options like client ID, which is pretty straightforward, which we use for on the Terraform side as well. Right. Uh, and then the client secret. And then we, all we say is enable. And as you can see, it's mounted and it's ready to go. And you can see that in the authentication methods now. So we're good to go. So we have actually successfully told Walt that, hey, there's this Azure uh, you know, entity that you should trust and, and connect it with that entity. And that's what we have done now. That was super straightforward. Yeah, straightforward. You can do the same steps using the CLI as well. But in this case, I wanted to show off the UI a little bit. Uh, so let's let's dive into the CLI, which is where we like to live in. <laughs> yeah. So so in this uh, example, we'll be kind of like using a VM and and treating that like let's say that VM might be using an application or running an application. How does that VM get into uh, get logged into into Vault? So right now, uh, what we'll do is we'll do a set of set of things like create a policy to restrict access to that application. We'll create a role uh, that'll that'll use those policies. And then we'll we'll use a user like a, we'll pretend to be a user and log in using that role using the using the JWT token and things like that nice. that I talked about. So let's let's dive into that. So here I have Vault running, so I'll just do a Vault status that shows you that Vault's running. In this case, this is not running in high availability mode. This is again a, a development server. Uh, so first thing we want to do is basically we have this uh, the authentication part all done. So next we'll do is basically create a policy. In this, so in this case, I've already have the policy file all set up. So this is the policy we're going to play around with today. So this basically means that we are restricting access uh, using this policy. Uh, anything that's under the example like path will be will be uh, will be basically restricted to only read and lists, right? So we want to create this this policy first. So we should do a vault uh, right. I think it's wall policy, right? Policy. Uh, actually, I'll just copy this here. There we go. Okay. Wall policy, right? Dev and then dev.hcl. That'll create the policy. 
Next, we'll do create a role. So this role is like, you know, you could have an admin role or a developer role. In this case, we'll create a developer role. We'll call it the dev role. Uh, I have this here. So we'll say vault write, and we'll write to, to the path. So everything in vault is path-based. So in this case, if you remember, we actually, uh, when we connected uh, a vault to Azure, we mounted Azure on the slash Azure path. So everything under Azure, is it basically belongs to Azure entity. So okay. in this case, we are, we are mounting, we are mounting the, the role, and, and, and the path is just dev role. Uh, so we are also creating a role called dev and also binding it to a certain subscription ID. So this further filters down access. So let's say you're an organization. You have multiple subscription IDs with, with Azure. So you can kind of bind access to, to a certain subscription ID for a certain role. So it kind of gives you that fine grain control over the, the roles, basically. So here, we will we'll do that. And then also like a resource group. So we are binding this to the Azure Vault demo resource group and setting a TTL. So any user that logs in will have the token available for only 24 hours, basically. And then they have to rotate a refresh. So um, that subscription, that resource group, th that's, it's limited to that. Exactly. Awesome. Yeah. That's so it's, it's fully scoped for okay. how you want it. Uh, now, next, what we'll do is we'll actually create these secrets. Uh, this might be done by uh, a person with higher level access uh, that can create these secrets for you, or even developers if they want to. So in this case, we'll create, create a secret under that path that we're trying to restrict, which is uh, under secrets example. And we'll just store foo equals bar. In this case, Walt says it's written it. And we have the new versioning API. Uh, the, the, these objects are actually versioned. Uh, so every time we write to it, the version count will go up. And awesome. So that's super cool. Uh, so yeah, we'll just test if everything is work working. In this case, we do a get, kv get, which shows you that we have already written the foo bar value, and we're good to go. In, in that case, uh, foo is the key. Exactly, and, awesome. and bar is the value. That's okay. right. I should say that. That's thanks for thanks for noting that. Okay, next, what we'll do is kind of do the the Azure side of like blessing um, blessing the JWT token, kind of generating that JWT token using the Act Azure Active Directory. Okay. So since this VM is already running in Azure, all you have to do is do a curl call on this really well known IP that you, that people are familiar with, and using the metadata API generate uh, uh, g generate the JWT token. So let me just prettify this. So we'll use JQ here. And generate this. So this this really long <laughs> token that comes back from uh, from Azure is is a, already a blessed token comes from the Active Directory, right? This is what we'll use. So next, what we'll do is basically do try to perform a login, uh, and this again is using path based route uh, path based uh, based login. So here you have like Azure uh, auth Azure login and role we're trying to log in as. Uh, so now we're imitating a user trying to log in or application trying to log in. Um, so in this case, uh, the JWT token we already have here. So we'll paste that in. There you go. And then we have the subscription ID, the resource name. Again, we're trying to refine access. And the VM name in this case is just Walt Demo. Okay. So once we do that, we actually get a token back from Walt. And this is what an application will get uh, once they're locked in. So this is the magic right here. So once you get this token back, you're able to do what your policies allow you to. In this case, we're only allowed to read secrets from slash secrets example, right? So what we'll do is we'll inject this token into our environment, and we'll use this like really handy one-liner again. Uh, and th in this case, all I'm doing is injecting the, 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 the output. And we, we're restricting it only to only output token in this case. Okay. Uh, so let's use that JWT token again, and then do it. And now we have the Vault token set in the environment. And now Vault client will automatically use the environment token. So let's do a Vault read. right? So let's do try reading that credential, and we should be able to read it. Right? No problem. Now, if, if you try to read something that's not in a scope, so in this case, let's say we're reading secret slash foo, which is not in a scope in our permissions, it should say permission denied, right? So that is the idea. So here, here like an application can log in using the, the Azure auth method, get a token back, only do what it's allowed to under the subscription scope, under the other like uh, filters that you've built in with your, with your role. Uh, and then, yeah, they're able to get this credential and do this. Very cool. So, if someone wanted to get started with Vault, what what should they do? Yeah. So, if you go uh, if you go to, to our site, we have a getting started tutorial, also an interactive tutorial. Uh, you can just get started and download a binary on your local machine. This might be Mac, Linux, or Windows, whatever else you want. But what's interesting is Vault shifts with a, a, a dev server, which is what I use for this demo. So it's a fully functional server, uh, and which you can use to interact with the API and use the CLI commands. And hopefully, we'll make this tutorial open source, and people can go through this on their local machines. Very cool. Well, thank you for your time, Isha. Thanks, Zach. Thank you.